Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of BC Buckets. I'm Matthew Bruni. Joining me once again is Colin Mitchell. Today, Colin, we have two players that are a little older, just a little mm-hmm. older. Um, not not saying that is a bad thing, just they're a little older. But uh, we got Tristan De Silva from Colorado. We got Jalen Tyson from Cal. Two Pac-12 players here that are projected to be first-round draft picks, probably top 20, 25 draft picks, depending on where people have Tyson. Um and we're gonna we're gonna discuss debate who's better, who's the better prospect, and I'm just gonna stay off rip. I have Jalen Tyson as a top ten prospect in this draft right now, right now. Uh, I also have that for him. All right, we're the same. So we're on the we're on the same we page. Think, there. We always think the same. Uh, kind of, not every time. Um, I have also have uh, Tristan De Silva pretty high. Maybe not in terms of in terms of rating, I guess my the rating that I put on him, but. I, I, I am buying both of these players. Okay. So we are buying both the Tristan De Silva and Jalen Tyson. Um they're they're a little they're different players, right? Like De Silva's a forward more so. Tyson is like a, a wing that can handle the ball. So they're they're different, but I think it's fair to compare them because they Tyson, 21 and a half years old, De Silva 23 years old. Um Tyson spent three years in college, De Silva four. So you know, both have had plenty of experience, like plenty of um, um, film in, in college ranks. And honestly, I mean, I watched their game against each other, the second one. And mm-hmm. I said to you, I was like, this is this is awesome. They both scored like mm-hmm. 25 points and they were just like going at it. Um, so Jalen Tyson, I have as the better prospect here. Uh, I just see it. I just see every box like I coming up with weaknesses has been harder with him yeah than anybody else and maybe maybe I'm blinded because he just checks so many boxes and maybe that's not technically always a good thing right like not he's not like great at one thing I'd say but damn he's good at everything yeah it's more than just being like good it's like there's some things that are really good and when I looked at Jalen Tyson I was trying to write down negatives I got like here I got like roll and then like NBA explosiveness. Mm -hmm. And those are things that a lot of players in this draft have. And the, in my overview thing that I wrote down, I think that Jalen Tyson is like this year's Jalen Williams in terms of why he's so undervalued. Because when you look at like people online, they have him like 30 or second round even. And when I watch him, it's like, Oh, this guy can play. And just because Cal went, what, like seven, they had seven wins or something like that. When you watch him play, it was, it was, it was really good. And I don't, I mean, I don't know what to say. Cause like you said, there's not a lot of things that are negative and we can get into the individual um, pros. Like for one of mine, I think just offensive skill set in general, just overall offensive skill set, not necessarily playmaking, but I just mean in how he can score the ball, I think is really impressive. He was 53rd in the country in usage percentage, second in the pack 12 in usage percentage. Uh, 35% of his plays were as a pick and roll ball handler per synergy. Um, so he just had the ball in his hands a ton. Yeah. Um, De Silva also, which we'll talk about a little bit, also had the ball in his hands a good amount. So, um, I think there's similarities there in terms of they were used as like ball handling and like creating wings and forwards. Uh, but Tyson, I thought a similar thing about him, like as a in terms of explosion, but honestly, like he was getting by people pretty, pretty well. Like he has a really good handle. Uh, I think he's a excellent passer uh, i think the passing upside is is there now he does turn the ball over quite a bit he had three turnovers per game but like i just like you can tell when a guy knows what he's doing on the court and he impacts the game in so many ways and starting with as a ball handler starting with a guy that can size a size up a defender and go by him size up a defender and hit um, a step back three you know get to a spot mid-range so on and so forth. Um, like the control he had over games was really, really encouraging. Now, again, like you said, Cal wasn't a great team, but he had a lot of freedom, and I think he was really, really good with that freedom. 46.5% from the field, 36% from three, 80% from the free throw line, 20 points per game almost. So, I mean, I offensively, there's very few holes I can poke. I will say there is one clear weakness I do have with him, and I do think his finishing in terms of layups in the mm. half court 
um, were what was shaky. I have act, I had act, I have access to synergy, and you can go through and watch like plays of a player. And so I just went half court layups, and he was forty seven percent on those, which is already concerning. But then you watch him, and it's like he doesn't have that type of burst to really dunk it on people or like yeah. you know, put pressure on the rim in that way. So um, that's my one weakness offensively for him. Like, and maybe shot selection, but again, the team wasn't good. So, yeah, I think it's hard. Like when you talk about the turnovers and the shot selection, I think it's really hard to gauge a player on a bad team. Like, I mean, he had he's 30% use percentage and he's not going to be asked to do this at any point in his career in the NBA, unless he becomes, you know, all yeah, NBA unless, he, unless if those good traits become great. Exactly. And I think where he's going, where his role will end up being isn't going to have to require him to, you know, he's not going to be the number one guy uh, Mm -hmm. on his team. So I think that you're going to be able to see the flashes of the passing and those will be plus plays instead of good play, bad play, good play, bad play. Um, And I think that that's why I have him so high on my board, because like you said, you have all these really good traits that if you compress them down into a role player, turns into a really really great role of player and that role player means you know high-end starter possible all-star you know um, i mean he shot i think three-point shooting is is legit oh yeah the i mean form, and i've written down here i've written down here very fluid in every sense and that's what this shot it's just like anything he does looks smooth yeah and not he in a negative way he's fine like he has a pretty high release the mm-hmm. he takes a lot of contested shots but he looks comfortable taking them he's not like it changes him in any way. I mean, shot 40% from three last year, and then this past year shot 36% from three. So I'm 100% buying the shooting potential. Um, and then he's just real strong and can take advantage of mismatches mm-hmm. against big, mm-hmm. against small. Um, I I love the confidence. I think he's polished offensively. Um, I'm just interested to see how it translates. Like you said, I think I don't have Jalen Williams as a comp. I don't know if you do, but like mm. – I could I could see it like that type of like role maybe. I don't think I could ever see him being a point forward type guy. Like obviously he's capable of that, but I think where he's gonna have to fit in is trying to be like he's not gonna get 15 shots a game, obviously. But I think what he can get is playing as an awful player. Cause I think he cuts, I think that was an underrated thing. I think he cuts and finds finds ways to get to the basket off ball really well. And coupled with the shooting, I think his shot is gonna be really good catch and shoot guy like i think that's a role that he could transform into as a catch and shoot guy so that's where to go back to comparing these two i think these two players are very similar in that aspect i i buy tristan de silva's shot also oh yeah like the silva as a shooter i think would have been three straight years of high volume and 35 plus percent from three like three straight years of doing that at colorado and she just shot 40 percent from three this past year Smooth release. I mean, can catch and shoot it really well. 84% from the free throw line. Mm-hmm. Uh, these are two really good shooters. Like, if we're ranking shooters in this draft, it's like connect and reach the Shea. And then, like, I mean, you could go like with one of these two potentially. So, let me read Shepard. Um, oh, yeah. Shepard. Sorry. <laughs> I knew I was- <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Colin, for making, not- making me not sound stupid. But yes. <laughs> Those three, and again, I'm probably forgetting someone like Dillingham probably up there too, but like then you get to everybody else. And I mean, like I, Jacoby Walter, Johnny Furphy, I mean, there are a bunch of good shooters, but like I just think these guys project really, really well uh, for the next level as shooters. So uh, that's where I like both of them. That's where they both got me like instantly is shooting, creation, Tristan De Silva as well. Off the dribble, I'll, I'll let you talk. Uh, what yeah. do you like about De Silva? Uh, whereas in Jalen Tyson, where I like his potential, I like Tristan De Silva's immediate impact, and I have him not necessarily a comparison, but he's my Jaime Hawkes okay. this year. So I uh, yeah. last year I was really high on him. Bruni was not Jaime Jaime Hawkes. No, I wasn't. And I think that that's the type of guy that Tristan De Silva could be in terms of coming to the league, surprise a lot of people, just because he's very very good at a lot of things. Uh, you already mentioned shooting. I think his playmaking is really good. Um, he's yeah. not going to have the ball in his hands crazy, but I think that that is a very underrated part of his game. And then on top of that, I think he, he him as a post player is pretty good. I don't think he's going to get a lot of those looks because of his size, 
But I think in every sense of him being a forward, because I don't think he's fast enough to be like a wing or anything like that. Like yeah. I think I think he'd have to play power forward, um, at six nine. Yeah. Um, I think he can be a really good player there, and with his offensive skill set on top of the defense that I think he has, it's not going to be an athletically pleasing uh, defense. But I think his his he's very smart, and he stays in front of the player using his IQ more so than you know, yeah, so just athleticism. I have two clips here. Since we're talking about De Silva, we'll start with De Silva here. Um, De Silva versus Tyson. Both of them are De Silva versus Tyson. So this is De Silva, or this is Tyson versus De mm -hmm. Silva. Great take. And then the second one I have is uh, flipped. Is this one I just showed? Did I, I, did I misname them? I might have misnamed them. Yeah, I misnamed them. All right, here. Let's show the other one here. Tyson. Nope, did the same. Regardless, um, <laughs> I saved the same clip twice. All right, but the Silva just know the Silva did some good things in that game too. Um, but like the Silva's ability, I do see. Maybe I've learned from my mistakes. Maybe that's what it is. Well, but like I see it more with him than I do Hawkes. I well, Hawkes with... was weird because he had like a like a, this crazy post play in mid range game, but was yeah. undersized. So it's it's a little bit different, but it I loved it. So I loved him as a player. Uh, De Silva, in terms of modern NBA skill set, definitely fits the mold better. Um, I think I know we're not comparing these two players, but I think De Silva and Connect, although they're both twenty three years old, I think De Silva has a much better upside purely because not only can he shoot not necessarily at the extreme clip that Dalton connect can do in a variety of different ways. De Silva is really good and he has the defense and positioning and handle for that matter that I don't yeah. think connect has. And, and like you said um, in our last video, I think it was when you get, when you draft a 23 year old, you're drafting him for the skill set that they have, not what they will have. And I think that the skill set that Tristan De Silva has is, fantastic yeah um he's always under control finishes yeah. well with both hands really really crafty uh even hit some like pull-up jumpers at a decent clip mm -hmm. um i was just really impressed with overall how he shot the ball and scored the ball um uses his size really well offensively and defensively like you mentioned he can i think he's fairly switchable at least like Three and four, maybe two through four, maybe so that was that was where I wasn't sure. What do you I think? don't know for weaknesses from I have strength and that affects yeah. his role ultimately. Um, if he wants to play power four, which I think would be his best spot, he needs to put on some more weight because I don't think he's strong enough right now to play in the NBA at that. And I also think if you have to move him down to the small forward, I don't think he's quick enough, yeah, to do that. So I think we're gonna have to see that's gonna be a wait and see type of thing where is he able to build more muscle? Um, to play that power four position. And that is where I think he has more of upside in theory is like then I connect and that his body doesn't look like done, done. Like, like if he can add 10 pounds here, you'll feel it. Well, not so, only that like, strength's a lot easier to add to any player at any age than it is like okay. quickness or explosiveness or shooting or playmaking or any of that stuff, like stuff that takes development time. Yeah. So, um, the one biggest thing for De Silva is and the biggest difference between these two, I think, is rebounding. I think Jalen mm. Tyson is, I've said it before, is an awesome he's rebounder. A, he's a fantastic rebounder, like seven rebounds per game, and like just everywhere <laughs> yeah. flies yeah. in, just yeah. awesome. Um, that might be one of like my like most that might be one of the most appealing things to me when somebody's like an awesome fly around rebounder like that. Um, and you must have loved Josh Hart this then the playoffs yeah yeah it's just like <laughs> damn it's it's fun to watch um De Silva's not a good rebounder right now for a forward i i just he like he's yeah, he has to get stronger um has to get better at like physically boxing out um can be out of position at times so uh he played with um eddie lampkin who was just you know a big strong five so maybe he didn't have to do it that much but um and cody williams you know and whatnot but like he has to be a better rebounder if he's going to play the four. So that speaks to your point of like, he's kind of a tweener, which is a little off putting uh, in terms of him being 23, but so if he can come in and shoot. Yes. Well, yeah, I guess you're right. Yeah. 
I like I, I see it with him again. Maybe I just learned from my mistakes from last year with Jaime. Yeah, but I see it with him in terms of I don't think he's gonna have Jaime Hockey's year because who? Has oh yeah, that? what an incredible but, year! <laughs> but like, I could see him maybe potentially making like a second team All Rookie. Like that wouldn't shock me. Yeah, no, if I he was a it. top ten rookie in this year, like for one year, I could see it. So uh, I have we both have Tyson higher. Um. I, that which is against which is not what the consensus is. It, which is really weird. Again, when you watch him, it's in, like just to go quick overview before you, I hear your comps. Is you have a player in Tyson that has anything you want on offense in terms of you could put him anywhere and he can perform there. And then defensively, which we didn't talk about a lot, is I think he can guard one through three at the next level. He's not a dynamic def- def- defensive player, but he's positional and he's strong. Right. Exactly. Like and I, I think, I'm and I think that. that's useful. And not only that, yeah. he's not like he's six six and six eight wingspan. Yeah, like wing player that's going to be able to play defense. Yeah. So I, it's interesting us being like you know with Topish we were both lower on him than consensus with um, with uh, Klingon we were both lower, and now with Tyson we're we're higher. Well, I think so. when you think about those players, now I do have Topish over Tyson. I don't know. Oh I yeah, I have uh, actually. I might not have Topic over Tyson. Uh, I have Tyson one over Topic. Okay. And that's just because when you when I look at obviously I think Topic is a way better, way more dynamic playmaker, and I think that Topic probably has a higher c- ceiling, but I think a lot more things have to hit with Topic. Whereas with Tyson, I think he can come in and just do the things he does well a little bit better, and he's a really good player. Yeah. All right, comps. I have for Tristan De Silva, Marcus Morris is the one I like the most. Marcus sure. Morris is in, is a great one actually. Now Morris obviously is stronger, and yeah. again, if this all comes back, De Silva, every comp you give him that's a four is going to be strong, like stronger, I guess. Yeah. Him. So yeah. I think he's going to have to get stronger one way or the other. I have Kyle Anderson down for Tristan De Silva. I see that. I do see that, like con- being under control the way he is. Yeah. Uh, but De Silva's a shooter, so that's why I didn't go with that. Fair. But I think Fair. both check boxes. Yeah. So, um, Tyson, I have a few names down. And one name I like, which is Trevor Ariza, because Ariza could obviously, I, I the shooting form kind of got me. They're, they shoot mm. similar. Uh, so maybe that's why. But I think Ariza, younger Ariza, could handle it, could defend. Um, I just I think those two have similar skill sets. Um, and then I have two more names, which I don't know. I don't know if I like them or not, but I'm just going to say them. Um, people haven't really seen it outside of Atlanta, but Jalen Johnson from a few years ago, 2021 class, I believe it was. We didn't do BCB for that. But Jalen Johnson has put together a pretty nice um, role in Atlanta. And then Stay with me here. DeMar DeRozan. DeMar DeRozan. No, I, like the not, DeMar DeRozan. Not, I like I like the DeMar DeRozan comp better than I like the Trevor Reza comp. Now, not the vertical athlete that DeMar was, obviously, but maybe right. like older DeMar, like where he could pass. Yeah, I think, I, think the way that, yeah, I think the way that they play definitely fits older DeMar DeRozan a lot better than Trevor Reza. And that's not to say that I think he'll be on ball like DeMar DeRozan was yeah. a lot. Um, yeah. but I definitely think that that fits his skill set a lot more. Like I see it and you're just like, okay, this dude is like a wing that can handle his running ball screens. Like DeMar can do all that and pass and yeah. whatnot. So can't be a spot up shooter, but I guess, uh, yeah, the, now they're Tyson, not the Tyson, same, Tyson can be that Tyson can be that, but yeah. So, yes, sir. all right. What comps do you have for Tyson? Uh, I, I couldn't think of one because I wasn't sure what role he'd fit in the wow. NBA. So I like yours. Hey, you did the same thing with uh, who'd we just do? Fire him, Cody Williams. You can do Cody Fire Williams. Colin. <laughs> wow, I didn't give one for for Cody. I did Zaire Williams. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's what it was. There you go. Yeah. All right, that's all we got for y'all today. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Leave us a like, comment, share, subscribe. Let us know in the comments who you think is better, Jalen Tyson or Tristan DeSilva. What do we, what did we get wrong? Uh, what do y'all think? And uh, yeah, we appreciate the support.